people in their words say, hey, I'm arrogant, I'm not comfortable in South Africa. Um, this, like, these are even comments that I get. I receive messages from numbers that I don't know saying, well, like, yeah, it's time for you to go back home. You're not comfortable in South Africa. I was, I'm just like... Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Um, after I opened the door and I welcomed you, um, you spoke to me about, firstly, you were very punctual to get here, right? And I really appreciated that because it's not something that happens a lot in this beautiful city of gold that we all live in. Mm. And what we spoke about was that the reason you do that is because you love attending to what you need to attend to and quickly going back to your comfort zone, which is at home. Mm -hmm. um, where do you think this form of isolating yourself comes from because really that's what i'm perceiving it as is that you love isolating yourself and just being in your own bubble i think it's um because of people mm -hmm. and also certain experiences okay you know i've been in situations where i've tried um you know to be available to people yeah i've tried to be you know going out being around people having fun all that and some of the times, well, most of the times, it didn't turn out well. Mm -hmm. So it is sort of like made me to be this person who's always indoors. Is it, would you say then you, it, it, it has killed that social part of you that you actually wanted to explore. And now you're like, I'm limited because these people treat me like this when I'm outdoors. No, it didn't kill anything. Yeah. It actually uh, helped me discover that I'm okay. When I'm alone. You're comfortable with yourself. Exactly. Like you're full exactly. alone. Yeah. And I do better when yeah. I'm alone yeah. than when I have a crowd around me. So you think then perhaps that you were seeking a crowd um, for some sort of validation when you didn't know that you had to do the work of just being content with being alone? Not even yes. I think with our space, yeah, you get the thing. But like whenever you walk down the street, you mm -hmm. get people recognizing you, like, and it yeah. feels good. <laughs> so you go out more often because you want to get people talking to you and yeah, you know, like yeah. complimenting you and telling you all these things that they like that they always say almost yeah. daily. So I think that was my reason of going out and also trying to be with the people because being indoors sometimes it mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. get boring. Mm -hmm. Um, so you just try to be like, you know, try to live a little, go out, meet people. But then, yeah. But does it not come, though, with the package of what you signed up for? Like, we can't reverse being Doricida right now. You know, you know. That's what I always say with, you, you can't unfame people. Mm -hmm. Maybe your fame can be, you, became, you can become infamous because of decisions you take in life. Mm -hmm. But you can't unfame a person. Mm -hmm. And are you happy with the state of being famous right now? Is there something that makes you, you wake up every day and you're like, thank God I'm famous? Not really. Ne? Not really. Um, firstly, I love my privacy. Okay. And unfortunately, there's no privacy. Sure. Because you can't even... Go to MTN taxi rent. You can't even take a taxi <laughs> because people will be looking at you. <laughs> say, well, uh, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. remember this other time when I went to, I was accompanying a friend to um, Dragon City. Sure. And then uh, when I got home, like six hours later, I'm receiving screenshots from people. So apparently someone had sent me there mm -hmm. and took a video and posted um, Which we didn't even video. see the I didn't even video. See the yeah. I didn't even see the person. I only saw the video from social media when I was getting uh, screenshots from people. But then I'm just like, that's where the not having privacy part comes in okay. because I'm out with a friend. I was also out with my partner. Which is something very personal. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like my personal space and you are invading my personal space. You could have at least came to me and said, oh, hi, can I take a picture with you or a video with you? And then I make sure that the people that I'm with are not included in that clip because they're not people that love a spotlight. How would you want the fame to work then for you? If you don't want it to invade your personal space, what boundaries do you want people to respect? 
Unfortunately, if I even set any boundaries, people are always going to overstep. Okay. Right. For example, if I be like, I don't like pictures or I don't like being greeted when I'm outside, I'm definitely going to bump into someone who would like to take a picture of mm-hmm. it. So I can't really set any boundaries. Is it not a case then that even if you don't set them per se in public like this on this mm-hmm. platform, but when you're out, you're going to set them anyway because you can't be taking pictures mm-hmm. all day long. Let's say you go say, I mean, you're having dinner with your mm-hmm. partner and you're just sitting there every two minutes, somebody's coming for a picture. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's really unfair. It is. That's one reason why I even stopped going to clubs and all that. I remember when we attended Pride last year, mm-hmm. I didn't enjoy myself. I don't want to lie. Because really? it's like every two seconds, there's someone who's greeting you. There's someone who wants to take a picture. There's someone who wants a hug. And now it's a group of people. And then you're just like, you are out for a reason. You are out to have fun. You need to socialize. You need to be with people, live in the moment. Uh-huh. But then you can't because you now have to be smiling for pictures. You now have to be hugging people. You now have to be saying thank you 10, 15 times. So it does get overwhelming, but it's the life we chose. Speaking of that being coming overwhelming, do you, do you think you've discovered what Ndoyesile's mission on this beautiful earth is? Is I don't think I have fully discovered that, but from what I've discovered so far, um, yeah, Ndoyesile is supposed to be making money. That's one mission that I've sort of like discovered. But like, okay, cool. This is one thing that I'm supposed to be doing in this planet. Mm-hmm. Making money, making sure that I'm comfortable, especially looking at where I'm coming from and also the dreams and goals that I have. I'm just like, okay, cool. I need to make sure that at the end of the day, no matter what, what happens, I make money. But isn't making money too vague? Because essentially all of us mm-hmm. are trying to make money. Mm-hmm. There's not one person who can't not make money because we live in a capitalistic society mm. that requires us to have certain affordability to be able to live, right? Mm. Even at the basic level. Mm-hmm. So isn't it too vague to think just you just exist to make money or your one of your biggest desires is to make money? Isn't there something more like, for example, um, I had Big Star Johnson on that seat and he said mm. um, for him, music and art and rap mm. Is is, is 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 his life. It's mm-hmm. not just a thing he does, mm-hmm. you know. It he, he does not exist outside of making music. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's what I'm trying to see. If have you do you think you've discovered something like that in your life where mm-hmm. you're like, I wake up every day and it, it brings me purpose. You know the reason the reason why I said um or I mentioned making money, mm-hmm. right? Is in order for you to do anything you need money. For example, if you say that your purpose in this world is to make music, Mm -hmm. for you to get into a recording studio, it's money to pay for that session. So for you to say, well, like, okay, cool. Um, I need to be maybe a motivational speaker, touch people's lives, you know, change people's lives. It still requires money somewhere, somehow. You need data. The Wi-Fi, to post whatever. Those clips that you'll be um, shooting. You need a good quality phone. Mm -hmm. Um, to shoot whatever content that you want to shoot. So why I say money is because when you have it, it's sort of like easy for you to do anything that you want. And also it it makes it better for you to discover your purpose on earth because you're able to tap into this and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, you move on to the next. Where's home? Yo, oh, Jesus Christ. Ah. <laughs> home, home is home. Yeah. Mm, home is home. Do you not like this question because of the stigma that's been attached to it, especially existing as a, a young black South African, young, beautiful black man as yourself, who's worked hard mm-hmm. to detach from the stigmas? Mm-hmm. And we don't have to speak about home. I'm mm-hmm. just want to understand the psyche behind not mm-hmm. liking to talk about it. Okay. Um, firstly, I'll answer the first question that you asked about where's home. Home is in Zim. I was born and raised in Zimbabwe, and then I relocated to SA in 2020. The reason why I don't like um, answering that question, or sure. the reason why I don't like that question, is because um, the more you put it out there, because I'm proud of where I come from. Absolutely. It made me who I am. Mm-hmm. But then, whenever there's fights on social media, they always use where you come from. I remember this other time when I was trending and then someone was saying... Uh, Which is every week. Like the foreigner. You see? 
So I'm just oh yeah, <laughs> I'm always trending like yeah. There's always something about me. So that's one thing that I hate to but like. Can't you just call me by my name? You don't have to attach where I'm from um, to everything that you wanna say. Sure. Because it's not like I'm hiding where I'm from. It's not like I'm ashamed of where I'm coming from. So that's the main reason why I'm just like eh. so. Zimbabwe, like South Africa, has its problems, right? Just like any other like country. any other country, right? Mm-hmm. But is it not on you then to disempower mm-hmm. those people who mm-hmm. are calling you Ndoisile, the foreigner? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If I'm Lungelo and I go to the UK right now and I go live there mm-hmm. or I go and live in mm-hmm. Brazil or Nigeria for a few months, mm-hmm. I am a foreigner in that country. And mm-hmm. primarily the word foreigner just means you are here for work or, or on vacation and mm. you, you were not bo- originally born there. Mm. And that's okay. Is it not on you, though, to disempower the people who would say, when they try and weaponize it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So you're telling me about my identity. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get you. But at the end, like, at the same time, it's not my duty to be, like, Either educating people sure. or whatever. Yeah. If a person is um arrogant, they're arrogant. Yeah, yeah. I'm not there to change them and be like, no, you don't call a person like this. I hear you. I mean, if you look at this, it's not really the wall, like, you know, um, foreigner thingy or whatsoever. There's a lot that happens in the media, mm-hmm. especially when um, there's a fight. People always try to use things that they think you are not comfortable with to so, get you. So, you understand? So, I get you. Exactly. Yeah. So, if I am to... Okay, like for example, let's say if there was someone... Um, hey, I don't know the proper word to, 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 to use. Okay, I'm just going to use the word anyway. Mm-hmm. But then I'm just like, okay, if maybe it's someone who is fat mm-hmm. that is being attacked on social media... Obviously, they're going to start attacking them all on how they look, how they're shaped. Versus their exactly. personality or what they said exactly. wrong. And because they're just looking at that person and they think, well, like, oh, this person is fat. So it means they're uncomfortable with their weight. So let's attack them with this. Yeah, but, but then they don't understand. But like some of us, we don't even care. I mean, yeah. For example, yeah. my height. I'm very comfortable and confident in my height. You can't come and tell me whatever about my height and mm-hmm. then think, like, I'll break down. Yeah, I'll yeah, never. yeah. So you're saying that people will project insecurities on mm-hmm. you because exactly. perhaps maybe they think that mm-hmm. being bigger in size is a problem or exactly. being from Zimbabwe is exactly. a problem. Meanwhile, you are fine with that. Exactly. Um, but, but I still think <laughs> you, you obviously we, it's a conversation. You can disagree with me mm-hmm. that being from Zimbabwe is absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. And Furthermore, you're calling me a foreigner and I'm in your country and I'm kicking ass. So, like... Exactly. That's how it is. Because when you look at it, most of the people that sort of, like, attack you on social media, yeah. they are not living the life that you are living. Because my own beggar or moon to then you'll be like, okay. And that's why I always try, like, I always try by all means to pick my beggars. Before I even respond to anyone, I first look at you and ask myself if it's worth it. For example, now I can't fight with a person who has ten followers. Who's benefiting? It's them because they're gaining gaining more exposure. They get engagement exactly by, by going back and forth with you. Exactly. So it, that fight is pointless um, to me. I'm not getting anything from that fight. You know, there's a word for that: envy. They're envious. <laughs> M- many people who project, mm. uh, um, envy comes from a place of thinking that a person who is in a certain level of life doesn't deserve to be there. Exactly. And you think, why them and not me? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And with me, it like it always comes to, Uber, like, how is he even in South Africa? How is he living this life? Is he even legal? Mm-hmm. All the, like, those are questions that I get, even like in the comment section when, um, you know, there's something about me on the media. Those are questions that you get. Uber, like, oh, does he even have legal um, documentation? Is he even legal in this country? Um, what does he do for a living? Uh, this and that. And then I'm just like, Okay. Because there's nothing more to it. I, yeah. can, I, can, I can't go around carrying my passport and being like, this is my yeah, passport. I'm, I'm legal, I'm guys. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's pointless to me. Yeah, so I, yeah. I honestly cannot do that. So I just let them do whatever they want to do. And then, Mina, I keep my truth to myself. 
we can't ignore the fact, as we said, that you you trend almost every week. Mm. Say, um, you don't take a break from trending. <laughs> you wake up, you go on social media, like, oh, it's another day, it's still a trending no, day. That's, in, that's why I'm not even that much active on social media anymore. Yeah. I just get there, post, and leave. Yeah, yeah. Because not that it affects me, but then it's now boring having to deal with the same thing over and over and over again. And it's like, Mostly people that don't, I can't really say that don't even exist, but then it's, um, it's ghost accounts. Okay. Because you go to that account talking about you, saying whatever, some that are saying good things, some that are saying bad things, but then you go to the accounts, there's nothing there. What's the most painful thing that's been said about you on social media? The most painful thing that has been said about me on social media, let me see... I think it has to be... Okay, like the thing with me is I'm very much independent. Mm -hmm. Everything that I have right now, I worked for it. Sure. I built it from scratch with no financial assistance from any friend, any relationship or partner or any family member. So the only thing that got me off that was said about me, I think it was one of the first things on social media was... Um, uh, like someone was saying that... Um, dating politicians and sleeping with politicians for money hmm. yeah well that's one thing that took me off because it makes me feel like okay wushu wuti, you are looking down on all the hard work that i've been doing everything exactly, that i've done that i've been doing for the past two or three years you see me on social media i've been grinding from the beginning so you can't come and tell me but like i now stay wherever or i have this and that because I'm attached um, to someone. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense to me, especially when I know that there's no one that I'm attached to. It it, it makes sense um, that that would hurt you because it it's it, it, once again you you escaped mm. um, for the lack of a better word you escaped poverty from home. Exactly. You didn't get any help in escaping. You came to South Africa. Exactly. You. We're like, oh my gosh, Joburg, mm -hmm. where do I start? And you started mm -hmm. something that many people don't do or scared to do to just start something. Mm -hmm. You followed through after you started. Mm -hmm. And you were here today where people can criticize you, speak about you in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, you've made mistakes. I'm sure we can, we'll touch on to that. Mm -hmm. But you've started and you've built and you've mm -hmm. built yourself a decent life. Mm -hmm. And people will reduce that mm -hmm. to, 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 to almost a, a sense of immorality to, mm -hmm. to attain those things. It hurts. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it does. I always compare it to, you know, um, when you do good and nobody congratulates you. Okay. That's how painful it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah, it's not that deep anymore. We move. <laughs> do you believe you owe anyone an apology, especially in the plight of the many things you've been accused of on social media? Do I owe anyone an apology? No. Because who have I wronged? Lift that there. People come with accounts back and forth, TikToks back and forth about that's you did this. Is. You did this to me. He did this to me. He owes me this. He wasn't oh, honest about thing. this. That's the thing. I don't watch those kind of videos. Okay. I mean, I, everything. The only time I watched a video about me, like when I was trending or whatever, it was like the first time. And then after that, because I got so depressed to an extent, but like I had to start therapy and all those things like i was at the verge of giving up everything because i was like yo why did i create such a life for myself mm -hmm. but then after that i was just like it is what it is so i have never watched any of those videos where people are talking about me saying this and that whatsoever i always hope people that if you have a problem with me come to me direct if you go to social media, then it means you have a problem with social media. Yeah. Not yeah. me. So, I mean, do you not think, though, that's a bit unfair when Andre said it? Because people are saying that they are parting with mm -hmm. their hard money that they work mm -hmm. hard for. Same as you. Mm -hmm. You work hard for your money mm -hmm. to, I won't say support, but to purchase a product from your business. Mm -hmm. And then they don't get that product. Mm -hmm. Is it not unfair that... If people have complaints like any other mm. business about a product that mm. you don't reach out to them and try and fix it, mm. or rather, do you reach out to people when you have those instances where there's a business related issue mm -hmm. and do you attempt to fix those things? That's what I'm saying. Oboba. If you have a problem with me, you come to me. Okay. Right. So if you had any, if, if you have any issues, come to me and ask me, well, like what's, 
happening with my order or this and that. I mean, I, how many social media pl platforms do I have? Four. So are you telling me that you can't reach me on any of those? That's what they're saying, and though, you, that you disappearing. They, they say disappear, disappear where? It disappear where? That's, that's what the they thing. say. That's the thing that they don't understand. And also, they don't even ask Google, like, what's happening? Okay. You understand? The first time I trended, it was because of a PA mm -hmm. that I had. Okay. And they are the ones that messed up everything. I didn't know. Yeah, when I imagine clearly, Lana, there's someone who's looking at uh, who's looking for me and they can't get hold of me, which is why I got a PA so that when I'm doing other things, they can be handling the business side of things. So when everything was messed up there, I did not know until a video was out. But then I'm just like, hi, Bo, why didn't you reach out to me? In much like platforms among like this email, there's YouTube, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's TikTok. Mm. Five. You couldn't even reach out to me and then you come and say whatever. And then after that, okay, people advise you to reach out to me. Still, you don't. So I mean, now what am I supposed to do? But it's more than one person, do you say? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about the first time when okay. it happened. Yes. The first time it happened. How does it become a, and then, a recurring thing, though, where you, you surely have to nip the bud mm -hmm. of the problem, which you're saying was your personal mm -hmm. assistant, mm -hmm. whom I believe you no longer work with anymore exactly. after, after all those yeah. scandals, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you do you not owe your customers that courtesy to say, guys, this is what happened. Um, I am really sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I didn't know. I, I did, didn't, didn't they do that. Know. I did I that. I indeed didn't know. I did that. Didn't they do that? Uh, <laughs> but they're still coming out. You get my point. Like, I know you say you don't see thing. anymore. That's the thing. Remember, this person was there from, um, when was it? From April. Okay. March, April. Last year. Yeah, last yeah. year. Till around, um, is it August, September? So a good six months. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. That, that duration. Yeah, but, and most of the people that are coming in are people like from that duration. Yeah, but, okay. And then often, Nami, when I'm taking over, I'm not going to go so I need to put Izindo in order and try to see, but like, okay, sure. well, this is where we are, this is what's happening. And of course, while I'm still trying to sort everything out, there are other things that are going to be happening. Yeah, but, okay. So that's just how it is. That like, you keep it moving, Bandle. <laughs> <laughs> We keep it moving, <laughs> yo. Um, but no, oh, yeah, yeah. But another thing that I, I forgot him to say. Now, what we have to check is how true are those claims? Okay. Because I've had someone coming to me saying that I ordered something in May. I haven't received it. I asked him. A, I asked them a simple question. Can you send me not a question? I mean, I asked them a simple thing. Can you please send me the proof of payment? And then the first thing they said, no, um, I recently changed my phone. I lost all the charts and whatsoever. I'm like, you can go to your banking app yes. and get that, uh, that, 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 that payment For thing. any time of the year. Exactly, app. because you know, you, you said you, you, you made an order in May. You just so go to you May say, on exactly, your app. You go to May, it will show you. Till today, I'm sure it's been two months. It was in November. Yeah, now it's, it's how many months? Where you fib now? Still, I haven't received um, that proof of payment. More than one person who's done that, that type of behavior? No, not even. And then the other one um, sent me a screenshot on, on Facebook. Um, this one, she received a, 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 an SMS claiming that um, there's a package that is coming from us. She needs to pay for delivery. And then I told her that I, uh, we don't ask you to pay for delivery when we're sending out, um, like when you're supposed to receive your package. You've already, it's already You've covered. It's already covered. Yes. So we don't send you an SMS with a link to put your banking That's a scam. And... Exactly. Yeah. So I told them like that. So that's why I'm saying, but like, also you need to check how true it is. And also there was this guy with the locks um, that was saying that I owe him 1.5. Then when I went to his page, I saw but like his one person like basically just wants attention because his one person but like whenever there's someone trending, he, he latches on to it. He makes a video about that person, so, make it look <laughs> like he's associated with that person or whatever. Then I was just like, I'm not going to attend to this. I don't have the time and energy. Social media is a channel. Do you think there's a there's, there's a character assassination that is happening against your name, and there are mm. particular people who are invested in assassinating your character? Oh yeah, especially with the recent incident. Um, it's just unfortunate that I'm, I can't like talk about it cause there are lawyers involved okay. and it's crazy, but then yeah, someone went an extra mile of paying, um, a person to talk about me, to say that I'm owing them money, this and that and whatsoever. How I found out was that person started fighting with the person that was planning it. 
And that person, the friend, came to tell me, oh, well, like, okay, cool. You see the situations like this about you on social media. She's the one who did this and that. And also, um, um, what, what did they say? Because they sent me the old sc um, screenshots and whatsoever. So those are the things that I forwarded to the lawyers. And yeah. Somebody is paying people, many people, to assassinate your character deliberately. That's what, in their words, they say they want to ruin my social media. Heck, they heck. want to get me cancelled. In their words. Do you know what you did that's to what them? They, that's, that's what they say. Do you know what you did I, to them? I, I wish I knew, but then I'm just like, with me, some people take offense when it comes to my content. And some people just, like, for example, the other one that just said he, he doesn't like me. But then I'm just like, how do you hate a person that you've never even met? Do you see, like, taking offense over you speaking about, mm. I don't know, maybe, for example, I'm Zulu. Let's say mm. you make a joke about Zulu people. Mm. And it's, maybe it's very sensitive to me. Mm. But it's still a joke. It's different. Yeah, it's... it's different when uh, you've hurt me, you've stolen from me. Mm. Um, so that's why I'm like, why would a person go to the extent of wanting to make you cancelled to the point that you guys are involving lawyers and they hate you so much when you didn't do anything to harm them? Exactly. Like, that's one thing that I wish I understood as well. I mean, if you don't like me, why not move along? Guys, it can't be that deep. Or if, you, if you don't like me, why can't you just move along? It's very simple. Move along. So I can't really say, well, like, there's uh, a character or character assassination or whatsoever. But then, like, what I've gathered is, like, People, okay, people in their words say, hey, I'm arrogant, I'm not comfortable in South Africa. Um, this, like, these are even comments that I get. I receive messages from numbers that I don't know saying, well, like, yeah, it's time for you to go back home. You're not comfortable in South Africa. I was, I'm just like, I mean, these are comments. Even if you go through my videos and then check through the comment section, you would find them. These are comments that are there. I'm, I've gotten tired of blocking people. I've gotten tired um, of deleting comments. So I just leave them there. I actually get why you say you just post and leave now. Exactly. It, 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 I don't even it, it interrupt. Can never, it can never be healthy to hmm. be receiving that feedback perpetually on a daily basis. It can't. Exactly. No no person in this world is, is deserves to be treated like that. But then that's the thing. I'm good. I'm okay. Yeah. Nothing like shakes me. Nothing moves me. Because at the end of the day, I know the life that I want to live. And I also know that there are people that are depending on me. So I can't afford to break down. Does it ever come to you to want to leave social media? Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's why I'm actually working hard now. Yeah. So that I like establish myself, set up my businesses. Once my businesses are up and running. You know that they that, like businesses that don't need social media. Exactly. That don't need social media. Yeah. Yeah. And then once all of them are up and running, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> Oof. That is sad because th this is the very foundation. This is the very platform mm -hmm. that help you, helped mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in a, in a, when it was still healthier for you. Mm -hmm. It helped you to build a name, to, mm -hmm. to build a profile, and to even start those businesses. Because you would have used money that you, you, you got through having social media. Mm -hmm. And then now you have to leave it because it has mm -hmm. become so toxic. Who do you blame it's for not social even, media being so toxic? It's not even toxic, hey. Is it toxic? Social media is toxic. I think social media is on... toxic. People telling you you don't deserve to be here. You need to go I home. Okay, but that's toxic. It doesn't mean that you <laughs> you built you you you've got a strong will. Mm. You've got a strong character. Mm. It doesn't make that action right. The reason why I'm saying I don't care is because it comes from people that don't follow me. Firstly, so it's clear that it's people that don't know my journey. They okay. don't know where I'm coming from. Yeah. They just bumped into me on social media now and then they have opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying I don't care because you haven't been writing with me. I have people that have been following me ever since I started in 20, what, 20, 2020, 2021. Yeah, yeah. And those are people that are like, will write for me anytime. Those are people that I don't even, I don't even have to ask for assistance from. They just reach out whenever they want to. Hi, we're just checking up on you. Are you good? Oh, do you need something? No, I'm good. I'm okay. I don't need anything. Okay, cool. Even if you don't need anything, we know that you... Oh, even if you need anything, we know that you won't say. And then they just 
give me whatever. How's your relationship with fellow creators, especially on TikTok? I don't have a relationship with any creator, unfortunately. <laughs> you are so firm in your decisions. Because <laughs> I don't. Ne? Yeah. Why? Just in jail, I feel like there's a lot of unnecessary drama, unnecessary competition. You see what happens with these influencers and content creators. They befriend each other. Two months down the line, they're now fighting, airing each other's whatever. Dirty laundry. laundry yeah. On the media. Yeah. I don't have the time for that, Timna. I don't have the time for that. So I just try by all means to not have any friendships in the social media content creation space. So your 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 friendship is just a, a working relationship with Wandy, for example. Is it mm -hmm. not a Isn't it not a friendship? It's not an an online friendship. Okay. It's not a social media friendship. It's a real friendship that exactly. established outside of exactly. These platforms. Yeah. And then you guys just happened to work in the in the media space, no, Babili. So exactly. Yeah. Yabo. And then um, what else is there? What did I want to say? Oh, it happens that we also get like maybe same brands okay. wanting to do work with us. Yeah. But then that's why you see we don't even post each other. You really, we don't even post each other. We don't even create content. We only created content once together when we had the same brand um, that we were promoting. Partnership, yeah. There was a partnership, yeah. Mm. Other than that, we do our things separately. If we meet, we meet separately. We don't have to now start posting on social media and be like, oh, we're together. Yeah. You, you, you're interesting because uh, you're not the first creator. Um, Naledi M, when she was on that seat, mm. she said to me that uh, she only recently started doing YouTube collaborations again. Part of it was because when mm. we had the conversation, I encouraged her mm -hmm. to be open to it again. Mm. But she said she had stopped for two years because she's like, mm -hmm. every time you try and do something genuine with someone, mm. it will be slapped into your face again mm. with a fellow creator. Mm. Like it, it gets exhausting. Mm. Collaborating is not a bad thing. Yeah. But befriending, mm -hmm. that's where the issue is. Creating a relationship. That's where the with issue is. A person that is in the social media space. That's where the issue is. So you like, as long as it ends on Instagram of commenting in a picture and say, oh, and look, looking good. Yeah. That's all. That's where it ends. Mm -hmm. That's where it's. Wow. Well, well, as in, we end <laughs> each other on social media. Yeah. Oh, you look good. Where did you get this? Oh, stunning. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We can love each other on social media, but it doesn't mean that you now have to be comfortable enough to come to my house. I think you, you being very intentional about, um, Ndoisile, the, the human, mm. versus Ndoisile, the, the online character, mm. have, making them two separate entities. Mm. As, is, is it something that you said, you mentioned therapy, you're intentional mm. about to maintain your sanity. Mm. Ne? Mm. You just don't want to conflate the two. Yeah, I don't want to like mix anything. I don't want to find myself in a situation where the person that you see on social media is now linked with Indoisile in a private life. Okay. Yeah, bro. That's why I'm, I always try by all means to keep my personal life private. It took it like it took me a while to, to even post my house, to post where I stay, to even post like, you know, when I started doing um, Living Alone Diaries, I did them because I was like, I was at a point where I was just like, you know, I'd, I'm looking at where I'm coming from and this is where I am now. And there's someone who is in the same situation as I was in. And I want to show them, more, but like, it's possible. So that's when I started opening up, like, showing my space and all that. Other than that, Benizo Bona Pella, the stove area. Where, <laughs> where you always... When I'm having just, just a piece of the house where I'm doing yeah, unboxings. Yeah. That's it. That's done. What's the most painful thing you've gone through in your life? The most painful three... Um, <laughs> The most painful thing that I went through in my life was when I got kicked out of home. That was the worst. Um, kicked out? Yeah. As in get out of my house? Mm, yeah, sort of like. Being done by? A relative. Okay. Do you remember when I came to SA, um, I was like, you know, didn't even know but like where my life is going to lead. Sure. So... Yeah, obviously, I needed a place to stay. So yeah. I stayed with a relative. And then um, things happened. And apparently, my sexuality became an issue yeah. to them six months later. And then I was kicked out. 
Was it an issue before, while you were still staying there? Did they know about your sexuality or is it something they discovered when you were staying there? They knew. It only became an issue six months later when I was, um, when I got into a relationship, firstly. And then um, secondly, when I was trying to discover parts of myself in Mm -hmm. the sense of, Buba, what can I do to make a living? So, yeah. This is interesting because... Do you not perhaps think it wasn't a sexuality thing, but it was a, a behavior thing? For example, some people will have limits to what they believe is the right way you should be performing out your sexuality. Mm. Then, like, for example, you started wearing makeup or you started wearing um, wigs. Mm. Um, do you not think maybe it's because you were transitioning in how you are expressing that sexuality? Mm. And that made the people feel uncomfortable. Not even. I started wearing makeup last year when I was staying alone. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So the reason why I'm saying it was um, a relationship, like, oh, how do I put it? The reason why I'm saying it became an issue when I got into a relationship was um, that's when things started going left. Mm. Because we were sort of like, um, how do I put it? We were sort of like, should I say open? But then they knew the person that I was dating, but then it wasn't an issue. Until this one morning I wake up and then my phone is buzzing from messages back at home. Um, insulting me. All oh, things. they they you know. they took all this info and and sent yeah. it home, and then insulting me. You know how it is. Yeah, disgrace to this family. Yes, yes, what yes, it, uh, yes. Yeah, well, so I like it came as a shock because I didn't know where it was coming from. Mm. Because mm. I'm like, hey, bo, I thought it like we were cool all along. Now where is this coming from? Even a man, like I don't even have an explanation, but like for that to happen, where did it come from? How did it start? Yeah, who started it? And and what As, you, and what did you do? Like where did you go? Like, um, I moved to Alex. Cause yeah, <laughs> Alex is close to you here, right? Yeah, yes. Yes, yes. I moved to Alex. Um, I stayed in Alex for I think five months, if I'm not mistaken, because I stayed for like three months and then moved to Midrand. Um, cause I'd gotten a job in Midrand and then, uh, uh, didn't get paid at that job. And then I left from Midrand, moved to Pretoria to stay with a friend. Basically, I was just like moving from house to house, like, you know, was, working for accommodation. Was the Alex season of your life? Did it feel like, ah, no, you see, oh, we, like, you down bad. Did it feel like that? Because you were whoopy because I was never no, up. You were, no, in, <laughs> we were nowhere, ne? you felt yeah. Like, yeah. Because I had not even started with the whole content creation thing. Okay. So, I'm like, to me, I was just figuring out life. Being as I didn't even know that I'm going to end up here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was just me and Jay taking life. And I'm um, taking life as it comes. And the thing about living in such a setup, ne? Because you are living with people that are comfortable. They just, this is like, you know, they're, no. they're, they're comfortable. So, to them, they don't even dream big. They don't dream of living um the that situation mm. Bona, if they see running water it's okay to them because it's their everyday life if they see umkuku it's okay to them it's their everyday life they you. don't dream about living in east days they don't dream about you know get you. having their own apartments so that's one thing that is bad about living in such a setup but then mina i sort of like knew what i wanted for my life and also i always believed that god had bigger plans for me when you were there, did you feel like, I don't belong here. I need to work harder. I need to work harder. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did. But then, you know, when you're trying to work mm-hmm. and then you are not getting any results. Sure. And then you become comfortable. Then you'll be like, oh, maybe this is the life that mm. I'm supposed to live. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, well, but then I'm just happy that whenever I got comfortable, something would happen in my life. Like God will make something that will make me uncomfortable. Sure. And then force me to live. Because I always prayed every day. One thing about me, I pray. We like with the smallest things ever. I pray. I always prayed every day, and I was like, God, if you knew that this is the life that I'm supposed to live in South Africa, you, like, you shouldn't have allowed me to come here because we have a better home back at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I'm at home, as an I one room, Mikai. Yeah. Now I'm living in a one room, sharing with a person, and it it was very small, and you can't, you couldn't even fit. Like there was only a three quarter bed. You couldn't even fit like a double bed or anything. 
there was just like no wardrobe, nothing. It was just like a three quarter bed. No like privacy whatsoever. A, a, a chest of drawers, nothing. You change and your know, eat your... Exactly. And then the bathroom, it's like it's shared. Hmm. They cause like the whatever twenty people living there, so you share that bathroom new twenty. And the reason why I'm saying God will make me uncomfortable in order for me to move was things will start happening. For example, the person that I would share with, they would bring their partner there. Now, me now, I need to figure out where I should go, cause it's a one room house. All of us can't sit there. It can't be the three of us in, in, in that space. And also, they wanna do their things. So I can't be just like sitting there and looking at them. Now I have to find where I have to go for the day or for the night. And I feel like one thing that pushed me to sort of like be like, yo, I need to work hard was when um, the boyfriend came because he would come and leave, come and leave, come and leave. And then he started coming. Um, he started with coming and then leaving early because he would leave like maybe nobody would leave like around four or five while it's still early. This is your roommate's boyfriend. Yes, my, my roommate's boyfriend. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind, I would sit outside and wait for them to do whatever they're doing. And then he leaves. This other day, it was raining. Yeah. I was sitting by this staircase. It was at night. It was now around nine. Cold. It's raining. There's nowhere else to sleep or to stay. The boyfriend was still there. You're like, you, I'm sure something came into your mind. You're like, this is not I was like, life. this is not the life. <laughs> I was like, this I is came not to the jump life that for. I want to live. This is not the life that I, 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 I left home for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it got worse when he comes to sleep over. Now he comes to sleep over. Where and do you go? He, exactly. Now, yo, as in, that's, that's the part of my life that I'm not, I can't really say that I'm not even proud of because I was on survival mode. Hmm. So now you have to make a plan. You get guys asking you out on your DMs. Now you have to persuade them to come and fetch you so that you can go and sleep at their house. Hmm. And see, it's the only escape because maybe yeah. m- maybe guy lives in Midrand or Waterfall or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you get a proper shower now in a private exactly. bedroom. Exactly. You get to eat, eat proper food. Proper food. <laughs> you're getting breakfast for a good weekend maybe. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. But then the thing with me is it, like, it wasn't like a lot of people, no. It was just like one person because mm. he was interested, all that, whatever. Okay, cool. But then I would never tell him, over like, hey, this is what I'm going through. Sure. Yeah, well, so to him, you'd be like, oh, I'm just like, you know, meeting up with this person. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, he would come fetch me, whatever. And then, yeah. You speak about praying a lot. Why do you think God specifically listens to your prayers? Um... I think it's because he knows my heart and he knows my struggles. Huh. And he knows, like, where I stand in this whole life thing. Do you think you have a deep relationship with God? It's fair. Okay. It's a fair relationship. I can't really say that it's, like, deep. Because there are times where I do things that are, like... <laughs> And there are times where I even forget to pray. There are times where I just, yeah. Where I feel like, especially when I'm going through my own things, when life is like a bit dark, and then I start sort of like blaming God. But then I quickly like look back, where like, okay. Where do I come from? from. Yeah, and this, and, and this is where you've brought me. grateful. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm always grateful. I mean, now you can give me a hundred trends. I'll be grateful. You won't hear me saying, well, like, what is your trends? But when people think, um, when people become famous, they start saying, I vote. Yeah, I just having <laughs> these weird standards. When I go and I get to a club, I need a bottle of champagne. If a guy is asking me, well, like, can I buy you alcohol? He needs to buy me champagne. No, I mean, you get a club, you get to a club, you buy me brutal fruit. I'm grateful, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I can't afford. Yeah. It's not like I can't afford, but then it's just the fact that I'm not using my money. And also, if you can't afford, it's okay. It's a season you're going through. Like, I, that's how, like, even if you don't afford at that particular moment, guys. Yeah. Like, it's Lindo who says, you I do financially overstretched. Financially so overstretched. Because right now we have bills. Yeah. And the more you grow, the more money you make, the more bills you get. You accumulate. Exactly. Because life becomes bigger and mm. better. So you choose your priorities. Talk about what, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to a club and impress people, pop a, pop a bottle? Or you want to live in a comfortable, safe area and pay your rentals? 
Are you fearful of going back to that life of living in Alex? Very much. Ne? Very much so. I don't... I, I, that's, that's one part of my life that I don't want to relive. Mm, 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 that's mm. one part of my life that I don't ever want to visit or go back to. Yeah, yeah. That's one reason why I push hard because I'm just like, I know how suffering is like. I sure. know how going to bed is it's like. It's like, it, 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 it's inhumane. Mm. Nobody deserves it. I mean, you spoke earlier about um Uguti people who 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 stayed where you stayed mm. you realize that, no man many of these people are in a comfort zone mm. but it's actually very structural how they're in a comfort zone they don't even realize they're in a comfort zone exactly it's because the system is so hard mm. that escaping for them just doesn't even look like an option not even some are just comfortable cuz you're not paying rent there most you're not paying electricity they do these illegal connections and whatsoever do you know that a labor seller corner? Mark the mukes, we bang a busy, whatever is it? Is it what is it called? City power? It's called, <laughs> yes, no, yes. they will call it bars and, no bars and zela bar mas guno muto was you would be need to go and touch there or touch this wire and that wire. Okay, so like we will come back on. And it will like power would go off because of those illegal connections. Yes, because there's so many of them. Because mm. you hear, oh, we be like this dog, we bang a they like they know each other. They know each other. Oh, we be like this stuff. Now being like it, it quickly. At the same time, yeah. So now so many people be zubani bani as all be as a connector alike. La, my anger could not zombie into two days long. And so that's all things that comfortable. When they don't see anything bad about their life because they're not you. paying rent, they're not buying electricity, they're not doing anything. And most of the people that stay there, don't, they don't even work. But sure. still, injured. I'm like, there are people that are trying to make a living. Yeah, there's some dancing, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some washing, like, car, window, whatever thingy. There's some selling those licensed disc thingies, yeah. car banks. Right? They're yeah. trying to make a living. They're trying to go home mm. and buy food But then you get families. some Anoshele Alex, and then they'll tell you, I'm Seben Zayiko. The government is not doing anything for us. The government hasn't been doing anything for anyone since we were born. Yeah. Thirty years later into exactly. democracy. So if you don't stand up and create a life for yourself, do you believe it's a mentality that people need to live to get out? Because mm. I- I'm sorry, they can't keep blaming forever. Can't keep blaming the government forever. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's sort of like an 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 idea that has been instilled in their brains. Sure. Before, like um in seven zayiko. Now they run with that thing you're buying seven zayiko. Okay. If in okay. seven zayiko um Lava Sema office in Ba Bangenekanjan Lava seven Zabo pick and pay. Oh me Uzoti. I remember this other one. Uh they sent me a DM asking for help. Over like Ofunum Sebens or whatsoever. And then I spoke to this other lady who ex a a pick and pay. And then I went back to them. I was like, okay, I spoke to this lady, but he, um, they're currently hiring. I think it's backpackers, whatever. The salary is like 3.5. It's not much, yeah. But it's a They were like, no, I can't work at a retail store. I'm like, oh, yeah, Jabu, la umnand. So that's how people are. A comfort zone of just mm-hmm. waking up every day, not doing mm-hmm. anything. Is... I'm not knowing the master's degree, na, I can't work a shop right. I know. Banga government have a doctorate, but they some eight times straight. Huh? So it's the I don't know like how society has built people manje to make them think about like they are supposed to get things easily in life. And also when you're starting, whether it's your first time job, you're supposed to be get to get paid about fifty thousand or whatever. No, 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 no. I get you. Um, we're nearing the end of our conversation, and just is, this is just for the sake of it, mm. um, so that it's cleared once and for all for 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 people who come to this platform and consume this. Mm. Um, have you ever scammed anyone? Do you see? Have I Do ever, scammed anyone? ever scammed anyone? No. If I scammed anyone, I never inquire. I'm just having some Mauritius somewhere. Living Dubai life. <laughs> That's the thing with people. Um, when something is delayed or when you don't get an immediate res- immediate response, you immediately run, you're scammed. But then they don't come back to you and tell you, well, like, oh, no, I ended up receiving my package. Sure. See? 
they don't go back to the very same platform. Yes, they don't go back to the very same platform and say, "We, I, I ended up getting my, my, my package. Are you happy with your life right now? Am I happy with my life right now? I'm comfortable. Okay. Close to happiness because I'm not the way I want to be, mm -hmm. but I'm close. Last but not least, what's that one thing in your life that you absolutely believe in? And you're like, this thing in life, mm. I absolutely outright believe in. Um, it definitely has to be hard work paying off. Sure. Yeah. That's one thing that I strongly believe in. If you want something, put in the work. Mm. And then you will get to see the results and enjoy the results. Hard work pays off. Pays off. Especially if you are working for yourself. Yeah. By yourself. Yeah. And hard work by yourself. I, I think you're very specific about mm. that because you've also noticed that trying to trust others gets you burnt. Exactly. Gets you burnt. Because when you try to work with other people, they don't have the same vision as you. Sure. They don't have the same goals as you. Yeah. They don't understand your brand and the level that you're trying to place your brand. So to them, it's easy to go like, but he, ah, no, okay, I will deal with it tomorrow. But mm. they don't understand, they like, we need to deal with it. The now. urgency. Exactly. The importance. Mm. So that's one thing that makes me to be skeptical with working um, with people. Because I'm just like, you don't understand, firstly, it's like, because I'm friendly. I, I don't want a working environment where we're working and then it's quite delayed in my face. No, I am friendly. But... In the sense that I have people that I'm working with. Like, okay, people, okay, so I say that I have clients mm -hmm. that I'm working with. I have clients that are waiting for orders. So don't take everything that I do or anything that I do for granted. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to place my brand at a certain level. Sure. I'm trying to grow this brand. Mm -hmm. I'm building a legacy. Dare I say... People who've tried to think of you as a friend and be over familiar, mm -hmm. it's the Chomi syndrome because you're a queer man. Exactly. Ne? Exactly. And you get people like, especially when they see you on social media, you get people who saying, like, Oh, um, I love your content, can I be your friend? Most of them are asking to be your friend and they're like they're very quick with Whoa, Chomi. Oh my friend. Even when they're greeting you, wow my friend, how are you? I saw you under the guy, when were we friends? Where did we agree on the friendship where did we meet so it makes people to be comfortable and think they can say whatever to you without any repercussions exactly they don't even understand familiar. exactly they don't even understand the like you sort of like have boundaries yeah and also when it comes to friendships not everyone can be your friend you also have certain things or qualities that you're looking for in a person that you can call a friend do you see on engineer your life don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you on the next episode Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. 
live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.